Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So I just watched Lucifer season five, part two. Let's talk about it. So season five, part two of Lucifer picks up right where we left off last year in I believe August where we saw that huge reveal, the arrival of God himself. Now this was a really exciting cliffhanger for them to end the first part of season five of the show and this was of course I believe the first series that was under Netflix after Netflix saved it from uh, Fox I believe the network is um, where it was initially cancelled after season four so we already had high expectations going into this season and I already gave you guys my thoughts on the first part of season five last year when it came out so if you would like to hear my thoughts on that if you don't know already then you can go ahead and check out my video on that but overall the season finale very much kind of picked up the energy for me I felt like the series overall was a little bit formulaic it didn't give me me enough of a punch but overall I do feel like that season finale helped make up for some of the the less perfect aspects of the first half of this series and so I was really excited to see where they would go with the rest of the season in light of that huge reveal of the arrival of God himself and I have to say overall I do feel like for the most part they very much lived up to the hype of that that cliffhanger I do feel like the second half does delve into Lucifer's relationship with God we'll talk about that in a second as well as delving into the wider scope of things giving us some stakes to kind of get invested in in the second half I think it does a better job of doing that than the first half did personally but we'll dive into my thoughts on all of that of course but before we do so as per usual if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. Now without further ado let's dive into this. So first of all I do want to dive straight into my thoughts on the kind of God storyline of this series because I do feel like that was the strongest part of season five overall. The exploration of Lucifer's relationship with his father aka God, <laughs> his black father. <laughs> I truly feel like like that was the best part of this entire season. I loved exploring the psyche of Lucifer and his relationship with God, the complex relationship that he has with God. And there was definitely elements of the absentee father, definitely elements of major daddy issues, major daddy issues to be found. And we already knew this, of course, because we know the Bible, but I love the way that it is explored in this season specifically. I do think that the actors did a really good job of kind of having that father-son chemistry there are moments where Lucifer almost feels embarrassed by his father like he's the embarrassing dad who's like really proud of his son but that's an improvement upon what he's been for the last millennia where he's just been this absentee father who hasn't shown any of his children that that he's proud of them uh, that he acknowledges any of their achievements like that's something that's really damaged them and in particular Lucifer who was of course banished from heaven so I feel like it was really nice to see that be explored properly and to see their interactions and to see God <laughs> to see God um, start to understand where Lucifer was coming from and start to understand the life that he had built for himself on earth now of course like with many of the things that are explored in this series there are elements of this whole interaction and this whole storyline that did feel a bit cheesy that did feel a bit exaggerative I am of course talking about the music episode listen <laughs> listen musical episodes aren't my favorite okay I like musicals I like musicals that exist in worlds that are already musical the musical episode in a show that isn't necessarily musical or isn't usually musical is something that's quite off-putting to me I always cringe I'm not a fan <laughs> and of course you know there are many elements of this series that are cheesy like that like, that's just the way that the series is and I personally wish that it wasn't as much but very early on in this series they made
made a decision to make Lucifer Morningstar, you know, cheeky and fun. And so there are very much cheesy elements that are a part of the DNA of this series that I expected to show up in any of the plot lines that would be explored in this second half of season five. But still, I do think it was a bit of a shame because we really could have dove into the pathos that Lucifer has because of the major daddy issues. <laughs> Another thing that I also was very impressed by, and this is the biggest sticking point for me, okay? Because the cheesiness is like, it's cute, it's fun. Like this is what makes the show watchable really, especially for a lot of people. So I get that. But what really frustrates me is that they actually had gold this season. They actually had something incredible this season. I'm talking about Lucifer becoming God, okay? The whole storyline where God decides that he needs to retire. Listen, again, it's ridiculous. It makes no sense, whatever. <laughs> God decides that he needs to retire, okay? He's getting a bit tired because of Michael's manipulation. He thinks he's lost his powers, but even when he realizes that he hasn't, he's like, eh, I'm over it. <laughs> like, eh, I'm over being God, okay? I need, to, I need to get someone else to step up and do the job, but I'm not going to name a successor because I work in mysterious ways, whatever. <laughs> So then he leaves his children to battle it out. This is, this reminds me of like a rich, wealthy parent who doesn't have a will and decides to leave the kids. Like when they pass, they decide to leave the kids with just, just hopes and dreams. <laughs> like nothing, no will, no legal documents, nothing, just hopes and dreams and vibes and fighting and conflict. That's literally all you're leaving behind. Chaos, madness, <laughs> destruction upon the family that's literally what god decided to do when he went off to that other universe with his wife and so of course within seconds what happens a war breaks out a war breaks out amongst the angels okay amongst the siblings and they have to pick sides between michael and lucifer and this is the storyline that i'm like if only we had just done this because this to me was actually excellent it was so clever i wish the whole season had just been this i wish god had been introduced in like the beginning of season five i wish season five was like 10 strong episodes of delving into this kind of biblical mythology because that's one of my favorite things i've talked about this previously on my channel but i really do wish that there would be projects that focused on Greco-Roman mythology, Norse mythology, except in the modern day. Like how would those gods of old be portrayed in the modern day? What would their roles be in the modern day? And so you have sprinklings of that, of course, but except in a biblical nature in this series where you have the God of righteousness, you have the God of gossiping, <laughs> you have the God of messaging, uh, you have the God of, you know, all of these different things, the God of death. I would have loved if this series actually delved into each of these siblings, their roles in society, in modern day society, and actually given us like a whole different lore to explore within this series, as opposed to it being so firmly and stubbornly rooted, planted in the cop procedural genre. We need to drop the cop procedural genre. <laughs> I wish we could just move on from that. It was fun for the first few seasons, okay, when Chloe didn't know what was going on, so she was under the impression that Lucifer was just really good at getting people to tell him what they wanted, right? Like, it's just his gift, I guess. But now that we're delving more into who he really is, how he's the devil, the king of hell, whatever, we've delved into all of that. Can we please drop the cop procedural drama nonsense now? Because it's nowhere near it was interesting <laughs> and it was so frustrating when throughout this season Lucifer is like pondering over you know the presence of his father and how he's arrived on earth and their relationship he's trying to wrap his head around everything and in the meantime Chloe's constantly being like Lucifer I need you to focus on this case Lucifer I need you to focus it's like no one cares <laughs> The cases themselves aren't particularly interesting, they're not particularly exciting, and they're supposed to be like the C, D storyline, but for some reason they get like equal, you know, runtime as the actual main storyline of Lucifer and God and, you know, the archangels and everything. For some reason they get that equal screen time, even though they're nowhere near as important and nowhere near as cleverly written. At this point, it's just such an unnecessary part of the plot and it's stopping it from being wholly unique. It's something that is generic.
generic it's something that we've seen time and time again and in the space of you know the fox network i'm not familiar with other stuff from fox actually i am like empire is that that's also fox right but yeah th in the space of the fox network i'm sure the series was like exceptional but in the space of netflix in comparison to what we're getting on streaming in this golden age of television i feel like this cop procedural isn't quite matching that level like what disney plus is giving us marvel content okay disney plus is giving us star wars and marvel you know the marvel properties and this is a dc property we need to step it up <laughs> we need to step up the game and i don't think the cop procedurals are getting us there and in fact speaking of disney plus and marvel content this very much reminded me of wandavision how the first few episodes of wandavision really committed to being this reinvention of sitcoms of you know mid 20th century sitcoms it really committed to the bit for the first few episodes but then as the mystery starts to unravel as we start to learn more about what's really going on and these kind of sinister undertones of what's going on the series abandoned its full commitment to the sitcom genre and it became something within the marvel universe i feel like that's what lucifer needed to do it needed to have done this many seasons ago <laughs> i also feel like if the series had committed more time and energy and better writing and more budget <laughs> to realize the angels and the heavens and you know all of that mythology all of that lore first of all we would have been more invested in the overall war itself i feel like the stakes would have been so much higher even though the stakes were you know considerable we still could have done better ultimately when i was watching the finale i was i, I felt like a lot was missing the, a lot of the impact that the series clearly wanted me to, to feel was missing because of that lost time where we didn't really focus on what was clearly the most important storyline all along and secondly i do feel like the stakes would have been higher in terms of the family angle because the f second part of the season does such a good job of setting up the idea idea that you know the archangels and god and lucifer and aminadale they just make up this heavenly dysfunctional family that is very reminiscent of what we see on earth with human beings and so there's this irony of the angels looking down on human beings for being inferior but in the meantime their family dynamics are very much reminiscent of what you would see with humans but anyways i think i've made my point by now <laughs> so we can move on from that in terms of the other storylines that are explored throughout the series of course one of the mainstays of the show is the chloe and lucifer relationship the will they won't they dynamic i can't remember what i said back in august when i reviewed the first part of this season i should have rewatched my video <laughs> i should have rewatched my video for reference but whatever i didn't it's fine but what i'm saying right now is that i'm tired i'm tired of the will they won't they dynamic i'm tired i've never seen a show drag that out for so long and maybe i haven't watched shows with a ton of will they won't days but i'm i'm so i can't believe we're in season five and they're still doing the will they won't they except it's kind of this mutated version where they are in a relationship but lucifer is like T telling himself that he's not deserving to be a part of this relation like he's not worthy of loving chloe like i don't know what's going on it's just a different mutated version of the will they won't they like he's just not happy and, and committed in this relationship he has to second guess everything he's blaming it on the the counseling that he's received from linda which leave linda alone <laughs> I, I, I hated that i hated the fact that they just can't allow these two to be together i hate the fact that the writer can't seem to see past the will they won't they and they can't seem to see again how much potential this show has to be outside of just lucifer and chloe's will they won't they relationship you have so much potential to build a world around these angels around their roles in society today you could have had angel gabriel working in silicon valley working you know with facebook and and an instagram you know the angel of messaging trying to fight disinformation on social media like we could have had that we could have these great characters that could even lead to spin-offs if they're done really well but instead the series are so short-sighted the writers are so short-sighted that all they can see is the will they won't they all they can see is the police procedural dramas and all they can see is lucifer playing the piano <laughs> also i have to say in terms of chloe on her own like as a character in her own right 
what's going on there <laughs> like what what is going on with chloe i want you to imagine the script for chloe's storyline on her own like literally just nothing to do with lucifer literally just her storyline just her role this past season there's nothing <laughs> like there's no, there's one page of her talking to her daughter that is it chloe as a character on her own like cannot exist without lucifer and i understand he's the main character of the show she's the love interest whatever but beforehand it seemed as though she had a bit of a life she had a bit of a story of her own and now that's just like disappeared entirely she's become so codependent on lucifer and it's kind of frustrating to see because a lot of the brilliance a lot of the excellence of the character that we saw in the very early seasons is starting to become diminished she hasn't really gone through an arc of her own i mean we always talk about how lucifer has changed how he's been impacted by his stay on earth and how humans and the relationships that he's formed with them have impacted him and influenced him but in the case of chloe like what is the difference between her character from season one to now like there's <laughs> there's no difference and i feel like the show is kind of forgetting that if they want to keep making her a compelling character they can't just lean on the natural chemistry of the actors um they have to actually write her <laughs> well <laughs> although i will say to be fair it seems as though it is somewhat easier to write a character arc for a character that starts off bad and ends up somewhat good and <laughs> somewhat lovable and we're seeing that a lot actually this this year with you know a lot of this villain content with Chris with lucifer with loki down the line in a few short weeks okay i'm counting down the seconds but yeah it seems as though it is easier when you have a character who starts off bad and then they become good as opposed to a good character who kind of doesn't have anywhere else to go and a perfect example of this of course is with mazakin because her story is so interesting in itself like again if you think of a character who could hold up their own spin-off series and could be compelling enough and you know energetic enough to hold up their own spin-off series i feel like that's a character that's been well written well established very likable and of course brilliantly portrayed by the actress at this point i don't know if she could support her own spin-off but she is going to become the queen of hell so maybe she could um but i do enjoy her character i like her viciousness i like her evilness but at the same time she's developing this soul she realizes that she's like growing a soul and so she starts to be in touch with her emotions especially during you know particularly difficult times like the death of dan and it's really great to see and again like i said it seems easier to kind of create a character arc for a character that starts off at rock bottom and manages to kind of work their way upwards and that's very much something that mazakin benefits from as a character speaking of dan he's also here this season until he isn't <laughs> until he isn't he ends up getting killed off the show uh, it's sad boohoo i did feel quite bad especially when the characters reacted so emotionally to his death i was like oh i'm gonna miss dan <laughs> i'm kind of gonna miss dan for a while now it seemed as though he's just kind of in the way of the main storylines if i'm being honest so i didn't really feel like he was like a an invaluable part of the series at least not for a while now but it was nice to see the send-off that they gave him there was a lot of propaganda but it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's fine i'll allow the propaganda uh, for now because of the series but yes dan's death was sad in particular because of the way that it affected his daughter trixie and it was pretty upsetting seeing chloe try to console trixie and i think that's what was the most interesting part of that of dan's death really is just seeing how it would impact his daughter and seeing how chloe would end up having to raise her daughter fatherless while she also experienced the trauma and the mourning of losing her own father and that kind of comes full circle at the end there where we do see her in heaven where she briefly dies <laughs> she briefly dies and she ends up in heaven and she's in this like picnic talking to her dad i feel like that kind of links in really well and that's one aspect of the character that they did do justice for next let's talk about amenadale um once again short end of the stick once again wasted <laughs> once again like i i don't really know what they want to do with this character apparently he's becoming a police officer now are there no other professions 
<laughs> I feel like his character again they don't really know what to do with his character at this point um he has great chemistry with Lucifer I mean the actors just get along so well and that brotherly connection that they have is another great relationship within this series that is full of great relationships so they're really great to watch when they're together when Aminadel is giving Lucifer you know advice as he often does and kind of being his moral backbone a little bit but in terms of Aminadel's actual storyline on his own like what actually happened to him like what actually happened he has a son now he found out that his son is mortal he's not gonna have wings he's not gonna live forever okay we kind of delved away from that pretty quickly honestly um because other stuff was happening stuff that had more to do with Lucifer so we kind of had to drop that storyline and in the end his character just ended up being just you know Lucifer psychic once again um which is a shame because he was introduced as someone so powerful and formidable and he's lost a lot of that so I, I wish again the series would just figure out what to do with him because the actor is there the chemistry is there the interest is there but the writing isn't I'm starting to see a bit of a trend here and next let's talk about Ella for a second here let's talk about Miss Lopez okay the devout Christian that she is first of all I've always found this character interesting the idea that you would have this devout Christian this devoutly religious woman working in the same team as literally the devil <laughs> I've always found the idea of this character to be quite interesting however once again <laughs> the writing has been letting me down hasn't been meeting the potential of this character first of all they keep introducing the idea of her having this darkness within her they refuse to delve into that with any more depth any more detail any more insight even after all of these seasons and I'm just tired I'm just tired like they keep bringing it up and it's like when are you actually going to do this storyline justice because so far you've been failing and on top of that even in season five even in part two of season five she still hasn't been told the truth she still hasn't been told the truth and there's this moment where you think she's going to learn the truth when she's holding that angel feather that massive angel feather and you're like oh is she gonna figure it out somehow like even if she did figure it out it would have been it would have been sus like it would have been messed up it wouldn't have made sense but still is she gonna figure it out no she thinks he ran over an emu and we're supposed to ha 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 when in reality we're just frustrated and it wasn't a joke it wasn't a funny joke i'm just mad <laughs> <laughs> next up of course we need to talk about Linda now she had an interesting journey this season I mean it wasn't like a lot so like it wasn't a ton for her to do but still there were some interesting things like when she met with her daughter and her daughter discovering that she is her mother and that whole episode where her daughter was a murder suspect and then it was all cleared up um you know not everyone has someone on their side like that <laughs> when they're a murder suspect okay her daughter was very lucky okay that the police were working on her side and not the other way around but whatever so yeah that was a really cute episode when her daughter finds out out that you know her mother is there and she was looking out for her the whole time and she gets to meet her half brother so that's you know really cute but other than that Linda is just you know everyone's faithful therapist and like you know <laughs> she shouldn't be their therapist though <laughs> can I just say like she is in way too deep I, I think that's like against some kind of moral code some kind of code of ethics but she can't be everyone's therapist that doesn't make sense but finally we need to talk about my least favorite character of this season I'm sorry the gloves are coming off I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry I can't remember what I said again in August I should have rewatched my video but I really don't like Michael as a character <laughs> I don't like Michael as a character. I never liked the storyline, the idea that Lucifer would have this evil twin. It's so played out. It's so cliche. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. And also Tom Ellis, you know, bless him with his English accent, okay? His English accent is sus, okay? For those of you who aren't English, maybe you can't hear it, but he is a Welsh actor and his English accent is interesting. Like, it's unique and it's charming. It's part of Lucifer's charm as a character. So it's very forgivable but when it comes to his american accent and as someone who's non-american i'm just like oh <laughs> now again i'm not american i'm not going to speak on you guys's behalf but let me know how you feel about tom ellis's american accent 
<laughs> I just really didn't like the character of Michael. Again, I feel like this series could really delve into the archangels, their roles in society, including Michael himself, you know? I don't have a problem with Michael existing. I just don't like the fact that he's the evil twin. I mean, is Tom Ellis hamming it up? Is Tom Ellis having a fun time in this kind of actor's exercise, I guess? You know, it's a dream exercise for an actor to be playing two roles in the same project so good for him but in terms of the actual storyline in terms of the actual plot like I, I just wasn't a fan I just found it to be a bit cringe with all of that being said I'm going to be giving season five of Lucifer a seven out of ten so that's it from me now that I told you guys my thoughts on season five of Lucifer it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this season down in the comments below please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching I really really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one bye